right guys, in this segment, we're gonna take a look at some audio fun stuff. Um, forever in our studio, for as long as we've been doing stuff, we've been using the Lexicon Alpha on the soundstage here. And this is what we use to get stuff in for editing and things like that. This is what we use for the voiceover stuff. The problem is it's USB based and it sucks pretty bad. The Lexicon Alpha seems to be like the black sheep of the Lexicon family. Now Lexicon makes some really good stuff. We use a lot of their gear, but this particular box is eh. Um, what it is, is basically a really high-end sound card. It puts audio into and out of the computer in a lot of different formats, and it does this through USB. By doing it through USB, there's a huge amount of delay. Uh, the, the delay on this thing is like 70 milliseconds or so. It's, it's huge. And if all you're doing is recording you playing into the computer, simple, easy, great. But if you want to use multi-track and be able to, let's say, record yourself playing the bass, play it back and record yourself playing the guitar, you have problems. And it's the, the delays with it are just insane. So we're upgrading to Firewire. And this is the new hotness. 300 bucks at Guitar Center or musiciansfriend.com. We just got one of these and they didn't donate it. We tried, they told us no, we actually paid for this. Um, thanks to a wonderful donation that we got in this week that funded this. We've needed it for quite a while. So I figured I'd take a moment and unbox it and show you guys how to install it because we're going from USB to Firewire. So you have to have Firewire card. Our ratty old test computer that we use out in set B doesn't have Firewire native to it. So we got a Firewire card. And these are cheap. You can get these anywhere for like 20, 30 bucks. Um, and it's just a standard PCI Firewire card. So let's take a moment and look inside. Shiny box happy and you get a CD, a CD, a book, Firewire cable, it does come with the cable, ha, huh? there was much debate over that earlier, and you get a little box that probably has a wall wart, yep, okay, wall wart power supply, great, and it's got the little sideways one so it works good on that let strip, a little block, this is very important, they get a little watt, a little watt of white plastic, and then more plastic, and then a bag. And it's very happy about being in the bag. And a little thing of silica gel. It says don't eat. And then you get a little cable here, which is your MIDI I.O. And then what else is it? Oh, a uh, SPDIF. So that's your uh, digital connection there. And there's your box. Okay, so we've unboxed it. Now, first look, first off, it's steel. It's designed, you can tell you're dealing with professional stuff. It's not like this, this is just plastic. This is actual steel. Um, it's got two mic and instrument inputs, so it'll have the two mic preamps and all that. It's got phantom power, 48 volt phantom. Level meters here, main headphone meter and a headphone jack, and wow, are the knobs nice. They are the, uh, the pre-sonus knobs, so they're, they've got a little resistance to them and they're indented. They just, it's, I like the feel of a good knob. On the back, we've got Firewire, and this is the DB9 connection for everything that goes on your little breakout cable. You've got main outs, which look like just TS plugs, um, and then six line inputs. So you can do a lot with this. This is fabulous if you're doing uh, like home studio stuff. This is great for that. Uh, where if you had like a handful of keyboards or various sources, and you want to have a mic or two, you know, maybe a mic and a guitar. This is going to be the box that we use at the in in the studio, not out on the soundstage. For out on the soundstage, we're hoping to get a bigger version. But this is studio use, so it's cool. And a little power plug in that. And I wanted to take a minute and show you guys how easy it is to install one of these. Now, I've never opened the box before. I've never touched one of these. I've never even seen one in real life. So I don't know anything about it. But this is how easy it is. First thing I do is go over to our computer, which is just a basic. Win95, or sorry, WinXP box um, running Guitar Rig. So there's pretty much nothing else installed on this computer because that's all I use it for is just Guitar Rig. Now I've got my FireWire card here, so I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. Oh, shut up. Go away. Well, that was exuberant. Okay, once that turns off, I can unplug that thing. I don't need my cell phone for this. So while that shuts down, I'll open this box. Which has a wonderfully high security craptacular bubble packaging. All right, and here's our Firewire card. 
which probably, yeah, it comes with an alternate end piece, which we might need, but I don't think we'll need it for this. All right. Now, we'll unplug everything that went into our alpha and set that aside. And we'll set the alpha out of the way. Now, the nice thing about working on the Dell, and this is why I picked this computer, is because you can just pop it open. It's really easy. And since I can't get a camera in there, I'll take it to the camera. Here is the PCI slots. And it's really this easy. A lot of people get freaked out about working inside their computer, and, and you don't have to. It's, it's a simple card. It's got the metal back. Here's your actual FireWire ports. And you just stick this right in here, and it goes in your PCI slots. And as a rule, if the card will fit in the slot, it'll work. It's, it's pretty low tech here. So that's in. Then you just flip the little top thing over. Most computers have a little screw thing, but Dells are cheap. So you know that's what you get. So you put that in there, and you line this back up. You get it all where you think it's supposed to go. And line it up to the card slot. And it's in, and it's good. Close the hatch, boot the computer, which will now not scream. OK, and we don't need that. So we're going to need a FireWire cable. Now, when you do stuff like this, uh, especially with USB, but somewhat with FireWire devices, don't just plug the box into the computer. Because usually you have to install drivers or something first. And we're going to want the computer to take a minute and realize that it's, it's going to flip out and go, oh my god, I got a FireWire card. I don't know what to do. I'm scared. OK, I don't know which one is the drivers. So we'll just start with this one. This is the mus oh, it's a Studio One Artist Music Creation and Production System, which is some bit of software from them. This may or may not need drivers. I don't know. We'll see. See if there's anything in here we need. We've got LERFs. I love LERFs. LERFs are great. Cannot express how important it is that you have LERFs. LERFs, for those that don't know, are the most important thing in any piece of professional equipment. They are these right there. Little rubber feet, LRFs, LRFs. And it comes with a screw, one single screw. I have no idea what this screw does. Oh, there is a hole on the bottom that takes this screw. And I could be totally wrong. I often am. But my guess is that screw goes in there, and you can take a couple of these and rack mount them, like uh, probably two, maybe three. And two, and put them side by side. And I'll bet PreSona sells a, uh, a 1U rack kit to rack mount that. So it comes with a manual, and it comes with a drool book. Look at that catalog. PreSona sells the nicest toys. Ooh. So, drool book, and a quick start guide, and a, uh, a warranty registration. We don't need that. The quick start, which tells you how to do this. So, here, we'll look at this real quick. OK, it does need a driver. OK. That is this. So I'm going to do that before I plug it in. And we just put the CD in. It comes with a sticker even. So you know, we're cool. Give that a minute to do its thing. Put the feed on it. OK, and this is probably just a next, next, next finish thing. Next, 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 install. OK, so that's doing that. Really no brain required. See, this stuff is easy. People are like, oh, god, I've got to install cards, and I don't know how to do that. And, nah, you can do this. Hasn't passed Windows logo testing. It's PreSonus. We trust them. And of course, Windows detected that your mouse has moved, so it has to restart. So we'll let that do that. And I'm just going to put that on top. Now, while that's doing its thing, I'm going to plug the FireWire cable into the back of the new FireWire card. So that's cool. So here's our cable. And I'm going to grab our audio cables that we needed before. 
I'll bring these right up. Oh, that one goes off to you. Can I have a little bit? Will that mess you up? OK. So I've got my audio cables. Now I just need some simple outputs. Now this will not work for the output we were using before. I need an adapter. I need uh, one of the little, no, not one of the, not one, I need one that comes out like this. Look at your little. This? No, those are for digital audio. That's SPDIF. They won't work. They might work, but I'm not going to test it during a live shoot. So yeah, just grab me the adapter. I know we got them in stock. And I'm going to plug this one in because I know this will work. And the computer is booted. We're back. Do your thing. Hurry up. This is on here. These ones that look like uh, the old AT keyboard plugs are actually MIDI. That's Musical Instrument Digital Interface, or whatever they're calling it these days. And these are supposedly SPDIF. And given that they have an in and out, I'm going to believe them, though it would be handy if those were a pair of analog outputs. But we have nifty adapters. Thank you, sir. OK, now this is the adapter I need for this because I'm hooking an RCA connection to it. Uh, just put that in there, and that works. All right, now we should be cool. I'm going to plug this in and see if it works. Oh, it's going to want wall power, all that. I'm used to USB things where it's powered via USB, so I'll just go down here. Oh, we're making a mess of cables and stuff back there. All right, I'll bring that right up here so we can see it. And I'll plug this in. We have a light. It's happy. It, it's taking a moment to do its little booting thing, and I'm seeing a blinky thing because it doesn't see firewire. So plug the firewire in there, and it should handshake. There we go. It's handshaking with the computer. Computer says hi. Next. It's got the right name. Continue anyway, because it hasn't passed validation or some stupid thing, which is probably a way that Microsoft gets people to pay to send them more money. And the installations just watch a bar go across for a second. It's pretty simple stuff. It isn't like you're installing you know, some massive software package or anything. This is simple, easy stuff. Finish. If we're lucky, we won't have to reboot. No, it's got it. Well, we're going to do found new hardware again. And this is all next, next, next finish stuff. It's pretty simple. Now, the big difference here by doing it with the FireWire as opposed to the USB is there's pretty much no delay. Oh, we're doing another thing here. Yeah, now we're doing MIDI stuff. By doing it with FireWire, USB is a lot slower and there's a lot more stuff happening. With FireWire, the delay is down. And this allows you to play things live and be able to do real multi-track recording. And that, that changes everything. That's great. OK, it's all installed and ready to use. Are you really sure? OK, so we'll open up Guitar Rig 4. And it's still looking for the alpha ASIO device. So we're going to say, nope. We're going to use. ASIO PreSonus Fire Studio shows up right in the thing. And we can take our, we're going to keep the sample rate at, yeah, we'll keep the sample rate at 4800. And now our delay is down to 30.1 milliseconds. Now the input latency is 12.9 milliseconds, processing is 10.7, output is 6.5. So overall, it's 30 milliseconds of delay. And that is better than half of what we had. And I have a feeling that would get a lot better with a much better computer. This is a pretty craptacular computer we're doing this on. It's like a 1.5 gigahertz. So I'm going to take CD out. And now let's give it the most important test, because I've read one paragraph of instructions just to make sure that it didn't need the drivers. We haven't had to put any real work into this. I'm just going to grab a guitar, plug it in, and see what happens. There's, there's been no messing with it. This is out of the box and working in just a couple minutes, pretty much. So we grab a cable, plug it in there. 
I'm just going to stick something in input one. Don't need phantom power. That's our main. OK. How's your levels? Are you good? OK. So if this is working right, I can hear it. In theory, the camera can hear it. And I'm just going to grab a bass amp. And it works that fast, that easy. The whole system's up and running. I can use guitar rig. I can do any slap bass stuff. And now everything, there's, there's negligible latency. Before, it was annoying. I couldn't do it with a lexicon. You couldn't play along, like running it through guitar rig for doing live stuff. But with this, guitar rig works great. So it's fabulous. So yeah, that is a quick look at the PreSonus Fire Studio Mobile and how to install it and how to install FireWire Card and everything you need to know to rock out. So you guys have fun. I'll see you next time. And it just magically works.